Welcome back to MVM and round one, our series where we play just the beginning of a game to give you a taste of what it's like. In today's episode, we will be playing Dwellings of Eldervale, an epic one to five player worker placement game from the creative minds of Breaking Games and designer Luke Laurie. In Eldervale, each of us will control one of the many unique factions who seek to adventure and dominate over the eight elemental realms. Dwellings is a fascinating game that cohesively blends not only worker placement, but also area control and engine building. Each turn, players will either place one of their unique workers into Eldervale and take the associated action, or regroup by pulling back all of their workers and activating their tableau of acquired adventure cards in front of them. This turn structure not only provides the tactical ebb and flow of a round, but also provides an engaging sense of timing to every decision that you make. You'll witness every move that we make, and after the dust settles, join us as we discuss our entire experience and find out which of us came out on top. Welcome to our table. Today we're going to be playing The Dwellings of Eldervale. This is a brand new game from Breaking Games and designer Luke Laurie, which borrows from some of the mechanisms from his previous game, but at its heart, it is a worker placement game in which each of us is going to be representing one of the many factions in Eldervale, using our player abilities to interact with the modular board, trying to gain control of this area. However, it also has a little bit of area control, mm -hmm. and it also has some engine building. Yeah, this game has a ton of different mechanisms, but like we said, at its heart, it's a worker placement game. You're going to be placing workers of varying types out into Eldervale, which is a modular board made up of these hexes, but then you're also going to potentially be bringing them back or regrouping your workers and using them back here at your player board. That's right. There's actually only two main mechanisms in the game. That's placing your workers out or pulling them back. And when you pull them back, you're going to be interacting with your sideboard or your tableau of cards that you've acquired, adventure cards through the game. So you're going to have all these varying abilities that you're going to be getting through the course of the game as well. This is the sideboard. And on the sideboard, there's a variety of different things we're going to talk about through the course of the game. But the main thing you need to know is that it has the victory points around the outside. Everyone's going to be competing for victory points. Points. It has the elemental board. There are eight different elements that are represented in Eldervale. We're going to play with six of those. That's because each of us is going to represent one of those four main ones that are tied in with our faction. Two of them have been picked randomly, and then two of them aren't going to be used at all. And we'll be going up these tracks trying to gain victory point multipliers at the end of the game for what we have acquired in our tableau and the dwellings that we've built out into Elderville itself. Also, you're going to have a glory track. This is tied in very specifically to the combat that we do in the game. And then across the top, you have the orb rewards. There's various times in the game. As a reward, you're going to gain these orbs that you see randomly throughout the game. These can be turned in as well in order to gain some bonuses through the game. Yeah, and we'll be talking about a lot of this in more detail as we play the first round or so. But right next to the sideboard is Elder Vale itself. Like we said earlier, this is made up of a bunch of different hex tiles. There's two different types. One are the elemental realms. These are the colorful realms that you'll see dispersed throughout. Then you've got these sort of tan or beige tiles. Those are ruin tiles. The ruin tiles are going to be places where you go to do very typical mechanical things. Some of those abilities are also reflected back here on a card that every player has next to the board at the very, very beginning of the game. When you go to an elemental realm, you're simply going to take the little resource token, add it to your player board, or turn it in for the resources immediately. When you go to the ruin tiles, you're going to enact the power of that tile. There is fighting, like Jeremy said. The fighting is going to take place after you do the tile. So the fighting doesn't, it doesn't prevent you from doing anything you want to do, mm -hmm. but it may get in your way a little bit. One of the unique things, too, about the tiles themselves, as David already mentioned, you could turn these in to gather the tokens that they represent on them. However, they can also be combined with the adventure cards that you acquire in order to give you abilities when you regroup. It's very unique. Mm -hmm. You also have this stack of cards here. These are the magic cards that are going to provide a range of abilities through the course of the game. Yeah, there's three different types of magic cards. You've got spells, of course. Those are magic. Those are going to be used uh, many different times throughout the game. You can really pull those out and kind of really turn things on its ear. You also have quest cards. The quest cards are going to be cards that you can fulfill throughout the game for victory points or other sorts of rewards. And then prophecy cards are end of game scoring. You're going to start with five of these and you have a hand limit of seven. So the more of those prophecy cards you have or unfulfilled quests, the more that hand is clogged up. All right, so the program is called round one. However, we're going to kind of break it up into however many turns we feel is appropriate. That's because of the way that the game system works. 
we already mentioned that the game doesn't have a typical turn structure. That's because some players may be taking an active turn with their workers out onto Elderville, and some may be skipping their entire turn in order to regroup and take all those workers back to kind of refresh their ability on the, pre on the next turn. So we'll decide when we're going to stop. However, We've already been playing for a little bit. We actually had a peaceful time at the very beginning. Yeah, the time of peace is how the, be the game begins every single time you play it. The good news is there's no fighting. We don't fight each other. We don't fight these little monsters here, or big monsters, rather. <laughs> this is the Chaos Beast. And in our game, this is the first monster that's going to be out on the board. Every game of Dwellings of Elder Vale is going to have one of the monsters out there. Each of the elemental types has a monster associated with it, and they're going to be coming out throughout the game when we add tiles to Elder Vale. But at the beginning of the game, there's no fighting, the monster doesn't rush, until we've all regrouped at least once. And we've got a game in progress here, so we're cheating a little bit. Some of us have regrouped, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan and myself have regrouped, Jeremy got an extra guy somehow. How yeah. did you get an extra guy? I actually went to the portal, it's one of the locations out on the board where you can expend some of your resources and recruit some of your workers, those being the dragon, the warrior, the wizard, or additional workers. And I think Kira did as well, but you did it differently, right? Yeah, I used one of the magic cards. Yeah, well, there's a magic card that just let her recruit. So they got extra guys, so they're lagging behind a little bit, so they still have to regroup, and we're back to Jeremy's turn. Yeah, so we're already out of sync, and my turn mm -hmm. has to be a regroup action, but before I get there, each of us is playing a unique faction. I'm playing the blue faction, which is called the Pirates of Nightmare Cove. This is tied in to the blue element that we see right here, and you see right here on the track. That's because I specialize in that element, which means I'm a little bit better. I start at the beginning with some of those resources and a multiplier for end of the game scoring. Plus, I have two of my four characters that have special abilities. That's my warrior and my wizard. And my warrior has the special ability where he can actually contribute dice in adjacent locations and not take wounds, which is fantastic for him. Yeah, that'll become clear when we get into a fight. And then my wizard special ability is the ability to actually be brought into the game into locations where I already am. That's because when you take a worker action in this game, the first worker that you bring out to the board has to be to a unique location where you aren't already are. And then you have to start chaining these guys around. You can't just place wherever you wish to place in the game, but my wizard can. All right, so let me get into my action. I have to regroup. I have no more workers, no more wizards, no more dragons to place, so I have to pull back my workers. So you can, right from the start, see what I intend to do. So let me grab that guy off the portal right here. All right. And anytime you pull back your workers, you're allowed to place them on your starter card here. This is gonna start your tableau, or your engine of adventure cards that you'll have. Each of these has three different areas that you can go to. Right here, I can place a worker on the regroup to gain a resource, and we all have different resources that we can gain. However, I've slotted this with a tile that I got from the very beginning. So when I place my worker here, I'm gonna be able to draw one of those magic cards that we talked about. That'll be big. I love drawing cards in games. <laughs> I love the abilities that they provide. I also have a mill here, which is gonna allow me to actually build one of the dwellings. We'll talk about those when we get mm -hmm. to them. And then the final one is a area that's going to allow you to recruit more people. The more people you have, obviously, the better off you are for positioning within the game. So this guy's gonna go right here, and I'm going to draw a card. Of course. And I'm simply gonna add it to my hand. I'll look at that later. Um, and then we'll just start pulling guys off. I'm gonna pull this guy off here, and I think I'm going to recruit my, s what, my fifth worker? Yeah, oh. and I'm gonna go with a scroll and one of these mana potions and it requires two of any type. That's because it's the second of, or the second of my available workers mm -hmm. that I have to recruit. And he's gonna come right out into the game. And then I can't build anything, so these guys are probably gonna Either be one. wasted. No, they're just wasted when they come oh, back to the, to the game. So all my workers come back, and now I have five workers to nice. use on the next Whoa. turn. So I've got a lot of guys. I'm trying something different. We've, we've played this game several times yeah. uh, at Gamma. We've taken it to a couple of retreats, so I'm gonna try something completely different. That is interesting. You've I've got five workers, I've got two. So right. Yeah, right. That shows you how different this game can play out. I'm playing the Ember Crush Ogres. These are a kind of combat focused um, group and my special ability is on my workers and these workers roll two dice in combat as if they were warriors, which is really nice because I don't have to move my warrior around as much. But my warrior also has a special ability. If he's involved in a combat, win or lose, I get a victory point. So the game wants me to get out there and fight a bunch. But I didn't have as many workers, so I actually had to regroup last time. And when I regrouped, I did go to that mill and I built a dwelling already. 
and I built a dwelling in my home realm, uh, which is fire. And the reason I did that is because it moves me up the elemental power track. Each one of those tiles has symbols on it, and you'll move up that many spaces. It's like Jeremy said, a victory point modifier. So people at the table can tell I'm kind of going heavy on red a little bit. But now that I've done that, I only have two workers left to place. Since I don't have any on the, the board, I can go anywhere. So I'm going to go to that portal because I want to summon my uh, warrior. So that costs me two hammers and a sword. I only have one hammer and one sword, but I do have a tile I can turn in that is two hammers. There you uh, go. So I'm actually going to get one of those hammers back, but I wanted to show how that worked. Okay. Awesome. So now I get to take my warrior and he's ready to place. One of the things I forgot to mention on my turn when I regrouped, since it was the first regroup I did of the game, I had to take my token and put it down here on the glory track. That means three out of the four of us have ended our peaceful phase. Once the yeah. last person does to uh, does so, we're going to immediately start into combat. So then we can start fighting one. Yeah, another. that's what I'm looking forward to with these guys. You Very done? Cool. I'm done. That's it. All right. All right. Well, I am playing the elves of Briardale. Uh, so the earth element is my element, and I have my special folks are the wizard, uh, which is a wandering sage. So he gets to move into an adjacent hex when he's out without uh, any. Uh, worry about triggering a battle, which is pretty nice. cool. Oh, nice. And then there's my workers, which I really like the workers because they are uh, they have longbows, so they can actually contribute to a battle without moving into a tile, which is going to come in handy later. I'm sure of it. Um, so what have I done so far? So I'm out. So I'm now about to end my period of peace and pull back my workers. Um, one of the things that I did early was I landed on a tile and I actually upgraded my tableau. Yeah. to take where I would have normally gotten a hammer if I put my worker here and put a gold coin instead, which is a wild, and I really... Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Wild about the wild. Oh, so, boy. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull back and take one of those. Yeah, and the gold coins can act as any resources. Yes. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dwell here. Three for hammers. three hammers. So one of the things you have to notice as she's doing this, anytime you dwell, you actually physically have to have a person in that location to do so. It's not pulling off. It's meaning you're activating with a different worker or dragon or whatever it so be, happens to be, and then using the one that's still located there. So there's a lot of timing on how you place yeah. things on yeah. the board yeah. and when you pull back and regroup. And then so I'm going to move, to move up. Because yep. there's two icons Two gray. There, so so two now I'm... Now I'm placed on both my element because of my starting tableau and yep. on the gray element. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do is pull back my last worker and I'm going to bring out my dragon. Oh boy. No, my wizard. Oh, for two resources. potions. I was looking at the wrong resource. Two potions and a scroll. A scroll. Before we get into David's turn, it should be noted that each of these three actions, although there's multiple icons on here, can only be used once per turn. Okay. So you can only recruit once, even though you have six different positions in order to do so. And now I'm on the glory track. My period of peace is over. And fight so time. Everyone's period of time peace is over. Time to fight. Time. Yeah, so my, more, first, more my first turn on camera here is going to be the first turn where fights are possible. Now, the way fights are going to work, like I said earlier, they're not going to happen until after you've used the tile that you place on. I can place anywhere where it's unoccupied right now, which is pretty much almost anywhere on the board right now. If I place adjacent to one of these monsters, though, that monster is going to rush. Now, some of the monsters rush differently, but all of them typically will rush into that space and then fight you afterwards. So right. we'll see if that's what I choose. I actually Who are recruited. You Who are you I, I'll, I'll yeah. get to that in a second, but I recruited my dragon for this very purpose because my dragon is one of the special units for the clerics of dawn. Who I'm playing. The Clerics of Dawn have a special dragon and a special worker. My workers, I think, I, I think I like them better than even yours. Yeah. But I'll start with my dragon. Like uh, Ryan's warrior, my dragon, win or lose, when he goes to the underworld, and we haven't talked about the underworld, but when you lose a battle, all of your l units that you've lost are going to go to the underworld. When I go there with my dragon, I get a victory point. When my workers go to the underworld, they only stop there temporarily grab a sword, which everyone grabs when they go to the underworld, but then they come right back to me. Otherwise, units that you have in the underworld are going to stay there until you regroup, and then when you regroup, you're able to use the units out of Elder Veil vale on your cards here in your tableau, but you cannot use the ones out of the underworld that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, my turn, I, I, wanna, I think I want to start with my dragon. Uh, I am actually going to place right here with my dragon. Ooh. And now. And I'm gonna, cause I want, I want to grab. You really want to fight that guy? I want to grab these two scrolls. Yeah. 
Hmm. Um, and remember, my dragon gives me a victory point if That's he loses true. Well, that Chaos Beast sure. has a special ability that I don't forget. He's going anyway. Anyone that fights that Chaos Beast, win or lose, that unit dies. Exactly. So, so I'm, getting getting, I'm getting a victory point no matter what. I right. also may take out the Chaos Beast. All right, so I'm going to pull the Chaos Beast over here, and I'll roll for him. He now we're going dice. to uh, do combat. So combat is resolved with dice. You're going to roll an X number of dice. Obviously, any of the monsters are going to have that pre-printed on their sheet themselves. And then the characters that you're rolling is going to roll up to a maximum of six. That's because we each have six dice in front of us. Each of the different characters that we have, our workers, our warriors, our wizards, and our dragons, roll an X number of those. In your case, you have a dragon, which has three dice that he is going to roll. Right, and when battle starts, you're going to do a couple things. The first thing is I've initiated it. So I took the action of the space, and then I'm going to go around the table starting to my left to see if anyone wants to join the battle. Now, they can only join the battle if they're in an adjacent space. Right now, there's no one adjacent to me, so that would go all the way around the table. I would also have the opportunity to bring guys in, but I don't have any guys out either. Then we do the same thing to see if people want to use swords who are in the combat. I have one sword, so I'm going to use my sword to increase my die from three to four. So now nice. I'm matching the Chaos Beast's die. All right, so combat is resolved simply with the highest die. There's obviously some magic cards that you can use to manipulate those dice to the game. But right now, if I'm only rolling one die and I roll a six and he rolls no sixes, I'd still win. So obviously you want to go into combat for just the chance of rolling high. And I've got some yeah. great magic cards, but I can't use them on this All guy's right. monster. Let's roll. I'm going to let you roll first. I want to see what you get here. <laughs> oh, five, five, I just need four, a single six. Two. He got it. Oh, two no. Oh, snap. All right, so I lost the battle. So like we said, win or lose, my dragon's going to the underworld. I'm not going to be able to go up on the glory track. Had I beat the Chaos Beast, I'd have the option of going up on the glory track or going up in his respective elemental color on the elemental track. Right. All right, it is my turn. I've got nothing but a bunch of workers, so... Could you give me a victory point really I did. quick? I oh, you did? I'm sorry, I didn't right. see Ryan do that. I'm going to go right here, and anytime you see a tile with a couple icons on it, you got to go for it. So I'm going to get two swords, and they're just going to sit there. And the question is, do I want to try it with this Chaos Beast? I think the answer is... No. Is a big yes? Is yes, actually. I'm going to go right. to the middle there and take that tile. You guys are messing with fate. I mm -hmm. know I am. So move that Chaos Beast in. All right. Now there's a reason I'm doing this. It's First of all, it's because my worker counts as a warrior, kind of, and he gets two dice already. Plus I have a dwelling adjacent, so I get one more die from that dwelling. Mm -hmm. Plus I can move my other worker in, and I'm going to do that. All right. So I'm going right. to get two more. So, uh, you've so that's going to give me five one, two, dice to roll. Three, four, and then five. Five Pretty against good. his four. I'm, I'm liking my odds, but the odds, you never know. You never Here, know. I'm going to let you roll. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. my to fate the, to the left. hands. I got six. a five, six. Five, six, and four? Then a three. Four. four. Oh. oh, the four That's beats it. it. So I lose both my guys. So when any die ties, the, the, the six is tied, <laughs> then they went to swords. their fives, and they tied. And then Kira had a four, which beat his three. So. Yep. So the that's chaos my beast reigns supreme. All right. Well, awful. before I got I got too excited about getting my wizard out, and I forgot to ask Ryan to move me up for dwelling, on the score oh, track. Oh, we forgot to oh. move you up. So oh, we should probably talk points. about that's that right. a little bit about how the scoring works yeah, because I built next. So I built right here. So I would have gotten four points for that. So I would have gotten four because this yeah. and this. Yep. You're gonna get a two points for every ruin tile adjacent to where you build, as well as two points for any other dwelling adjacent to where you build, regardless of whether that dwelling is yours or not. Okay. So. Like Jeremy said, it's hard to pass up a tile with two on it, so I'm going to risk a battle right oh. now to come out and take this scroll slash gem. A battle with Jeremy. A battle with our, Jeremy. Our very own Chaos Beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, so my wizard only rolls one. I have three Ooh. swords I can add. Well, that's right. I forgot to get a sword when I went to the Underworld. Did you get your sword? I did. You did. All right. Um, I can't move anybody into the position, which is my uh, opportunity to do so first. No one else is surrounding it. Kira's got no one around there, so now it's spinning swords. I could do so first. Um, I'm going to say no. I'll roll a <laughs> single die. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and spin one sword so I can roll two. See, one of the uh, good things, too, is if I do lose, my guys are moved, and I can go anywhere I That's want. That's true. So I kind of want to lose this. Three well, to one. Not a good roll. One. But so I you lost it. So um, hold on, hold on, hold uh -oh. on. Let me see if I... You want to win it? Got a little combat trick. Could you win it? Yeah, the magic cards, oh. as Jeremy's looking at them, really change this game up. There are some wild magic cards that do 
anything from swapping your units from your player board to Elder Veil to letting you manipulate the die. And there's even some that create a massive fight in one tile where everyone in Elder Veil joins the fight. No, I'm going to go here and get a sword. All, All right. right, so Kira, you move up the glory track because you want to fight, and I that gets do. you two victory points. That's great. And nice. I also get to move my wizard without triggering a battle if I care to, oh. which is really, really nice as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That could come into play when you're trying to spread across the board. All right. Your turn's done? I, it is. All right. Man, I really, oof. You know what? I'm going to go here. Get that I, coin. I like That's that gold good, coin, man. I that like is a that good gold one. Coin. And I'm probably going to slot it here, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Not just yet, I'm he says. I'm glad I moved him where not I moved him. Not just yet. I want to give myself some options. All right, I'm going to do something on what you fun guys here. Did. OK, are you going to fight the cast piece? I'm going to go here. I'm going to collect this. Um, you know what? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Put that back. That goes on top. Gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right here. I want to show you guys something a little bit different. I'm gonna go there. The first thing that happens is you always get to take the action. Yep. Combat doesn't mess with that. You always get to take the action of the spot you're on. This is going to allow me to flip one of these tiles and place it out. And it is another a, monster. And then I'm gonna put it over here by me. Yeah, this is the dungeon. That's the only the first step of what you do with this tile. So get the. Is that the Death Reaper? It is. The that Death is the Reaper. Death Reaper. Yee, yee, yee. Here's these to go out on that spot, and the Death Reaper comes into play. The Death Reaper, if there's a battle trigger with the Death Reaper, additional units cannot join the battle. So you're ah. kind of on your own there with the Death Reaper. Yeah, so as you can see, the monsters can start populating the board and creating all sorts of havoc until you get them off the board. And there's even some cards that allow you to take control of them. So the second action I'm going to do is I'm going to spend uh, tokens, yep. and I'm going to buy a card. And that is allowed because I went to that spot. And that's going to allow me to buy up to two cards. When I look at the display of cards, you're going to notice that the, there are six that are face up. That's because we're using six of the eight mm -hmm. elements. Each of them has a cost in the upper right hand corner. And these are cards that we're going to add to our tableau that's going to give you additional abilities when you regroup. So I'm going to take this card right here. You're going to notice that this is from the yellow. So I'm going to move up on the yellow track. So I'm going to simply take this here and go like that. That's because I've acquired this type of card. Goes into my tableau. And I could acquire a second card if I had the ability to do so. Is there a double sword out there? Can anyone see? There I is don't think no so. Sword. Uh, so. A couple potions, couple gems. Double hammers, double potion, double gem. Yeah. Is there a double, uh, the double mana? I just want to burn that card. And that's an option that you also have if you don't uh, decide to buy a card. So it's burnt. And my turn is done. Now I am forced with fighting something awful. Yes, the Can chaos piece came in. Um, all right. So you're going to fight? Who's? Uh, can I, I'm going to be the Chaos Beast this time. Yep. I'd be rolling one die. You have. You don't have a choice, though. There's always choices, Ryan. OK. <laughs> oh, you got a card? <laughs> always choice. No, I don't have a card. You going to fight him? Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll fight him. Who knows? You may roll all ones. Uh, no. You'll be fine Kira, him. around the table, yeah. Kira mm -hmm. would be the first person to have the option to enter the battle as well with your wizard. I'm, I'm good. My wizard's going <laughs> to hang out where my wizard is. And then that's it, really. There's yep. no uh, there's no dwellings mm, around you to blue. help you. It's just your one worker against the chaos yeah. beast. Six, Six. Uh, So three, I can't three, beat one. that no matter what. All right. So my guy dies. I get another sword. All right. So I don't want to fight that thing. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go to the dungeon as well, but I'm going to come to this dungeon since I have no one on the board. All right, you have this blue tile. Let's just put it right here. Okay. Right, yep, right I there need is fine. Blue, a stack of blue, and you get to buy up to two cards. I do, and I'm going to spend three potions. Okay. I've got two, plus this tile, which is three. Okay. And I'm going to take this purple one here. Since I've taken a purple card, I'm going to move up uh, the purple space here and I'm going to set that there okay and then I have to I can't afford another one so I'm going to burn one let's burn that red one down there at the start just burn that all right yep so Can now it is Kira's turn all right so I'm going to go ahead and take one of my workers and I'm going to go here but I'm not triggering a battle because I have this lovely fairy charm which keeps a battle from being triggered I'll take this double sword. Oh. He still rushes he in. He still will however. rush in. Yes, he still he rushes, rushes in. He rushes, but he says, hey, what's up? Hey, buddy. <laughs> He's just there to hang out. Hi, friend. 
And that is my whole turn. All right, nice. Nice. It is kind of interesting because you can manipulate the position of those monsters potentially without triggering battles. Yes. Yeah. Maybe clog up a space that you think other people are going to go to. I've got one worker left here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go safely right here. I have to place adjacent to where I already have a guy, so I'm just going to grab this tile, and that, that'll be my turn. Jeremy. All right. I am going to go down here. I am going to collect this, and I am going to make friends with my Death Reaper. What's that? Oh, he's I am rushing going in? to capture him by spending two swords. Oh. And now what happens is, a rough is card. the Death Reaper is now my buddy. So I now have a f guy that's going to roll four dice for me every turn and do awful things to you. That yeah, is that's called terrifying. dominating a monster. And when you do that, that monster is basically his unit until it's killed. Yes. If it's killed, it's taken back out of the game. It won't come back Let's typically. hope that happens because that thing is a literal monster. It is. <laughs> it very much is. All right, I have no guys left, oh, as you big. as you joyously pointed out. I have nobody left, and I only have one guy left on the board. So when I uh, regroup here, I only get to trigger one action over here. Yep. And the action I'm going to trigger is actually to make a worker, because I am so short on workers. So here's a resource. Oops, sorry, I'll it could be that. any one resource. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take one of my workers, place it here. This guy comes back, and then my two guys return from the underworld. And do nothing. And do nothing. do nothing. They just hang out because they, they were just dead. had stories of the underworld to share. <laughs> yeah, there was a dragon down there and stuff. <laughs> it was a cool dragon, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the mill, and I'm Someone's going. Someone's dwelling. Uh, sorry. Actually, I think I'm gonna wait to do Someone's that. Someone say there's dwelling. nowhere you have to dwell. Oh, yeah. she does. Yeah. She has a guy hiding oh, behind I the chaos. Yeah, yeah. The chaos piece was so big. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait though. I'm gonna wait though because. Doesn't seem like prime real estate. Got no. a little ahead of myself. I meant to move my wizard my last turn, is what I was thinking, because I was going to try and go over here. Uh, but I need to figure out where I can go and get some stuff. I'm going to fight no matter what at this point, is what it looks like. It does look that way, yes. Fighting Everywhere is you okay. Go. You're Everywhere a fight you starter. I'm going to go here, here. and Portal. I'm going to bring out my dragon. Dragon, nice. Oh, man, nice. Give you those. You had just the right... Uh, and then this guy yeah, will come yes, in, moves in. Have fun. All right. Say David, what's up. All those four dice. Well, she probably has the opportunity it. to bring her other ranger. Actually, it I don't have anyway. to because yeah. it's oh, be yeah. contributes. Close. I don't have any dwellings nearby, so those don't contribute. But so I do get to dice. start with two dice. Hmm. I do have four swords, and I'm considering using. Oh, you have four swords! Holy cow! Let Your me break this into two. All right. I'll take one back, and I'll have one that I'm adding to the battle. Uh, so you're going to roll three here? I'm going to roll three. Three dice against three four against for four. the Chaos Beast. Three, that three, three two. Not look good. It's not good. Five. Ooh, I lose. close, though. It was close. So my she other gets a sword. sword. And goes to the she gets a sword, sword for her sword. efforts. Oops. Sword back. Swords. Hello, sword. A Chaos Beast is a beast. rude. A Chaos Beast. He is. He's he is. a Chaos Beast. <laughs> Well done, everyone. All right, my turn. I have to regroup, so let's do this. Uh, go ahead and give me my dragon back. Oh, I can't do anything with him. Yep. My wizard. Um, I'm gonna take this opportunity to slot this gold coin over here. Nice. I'm gonna bring this guy back here to grab a gold coin, and then I'm gonna bring this guy back here to grab another worker, and I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these two scrolls to get another worker. So I got that worker. This guy comes back. This guy comes back. All right, you're in pretty good done. shape. I'm in Very pretty nice. good shape. I've got workers galore. I'm simply going to go here and collect this gold. OK. That's oh, me. nice. All right. Ooh. Now, normally, um, so I'm, I can come out the board anywhere right now because I have no guys on the board, except I can't go somewhere that somebody else already is. Unless I go with my warrior, which I'm yeah, going to do. Yeah, the warrior. So e everyone's put my warriors, warrior on that blue spot right there. Everyone's warrior's innate ability is to enter on their first placement into a place that is occupied. Otherwise, you can't. Can I have that double, the one with the scroll and the potion? Can I just give you the scroll one? Mm, I'd okay. rather have no. the one with both, honestly. Okay. Right. And I'm going to immediately slot this onto my adventure card over here. OK. All right, so that's a fight. I only get two dice to roll. I will oh. move him in. Yep, that's fair. So that means I can take that card. I'm, Unless you go there. <laughs> I'm going to fireball. Before rolling dice in battle, I may roll two additional dice. So I will roll four. Oh, nice. OK. Are you going to use any swords? Uh, I'm not using. Uh, you know what? I'll use a sword to roll three. All right, I'll stick with four. OK. 
Let me look at my hand. I'm awesomeness. sure you've got some combat trick card that you're waiting to play. Yes, I've got <laughs> several <laughs> combat trick cards. That's fine. I just wanted that double tile. I rolled a six. Um, Oof. I will use this to reroll oh. three of my dice. Oh, reroll all three of your dice. Whoa. You need a six. You got it. Oh, all right. nice. That's fine. My guy dies, but see, be, either way, I get an X uh, victory point. I almost said XP. I get a victory point, so. I get two victory points because I get to move up on the glory track. Yep. Nice. But I got what I needed, which was that double token card. Yeah, it's really interesting how this plays out because you brought that extra guy in so that it did set up this space for you to go to if you can. Uh, mm -hmm. Except you can place anywhere, so you could sneak yes, in there. Yes, I could. I could if I'm going to do that. Now, David, you won the battle against me, so you should be up on the glory track as well, right? Oh, oh yeah, that's true. David did win a battle did against you. And did you give me my two points earlier, Ryan? I believe Thank so. Thank you for okay, rectifying cool. the score in uh, my favor. Indeed. <laughs> in my favor. All right, so it's my turn, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to bring out my friend. Okay. Go over there. I'll take that potion, please, and thank you. And that's it? And that's it. No fancy little cards to play or no anything? No fancy cards to play. Okay. Um, but I will move him here. That is wizard power is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I it's like Gandalf riding his horse through the He teleports. He's a teleporter. I am going to go to the Mage Tower. That's right. At the Mage Tower, you can trade in any two types of resources and get magic cards. This is the main way that you're going to be able to gain more magic cards in the game. So I'm going to get rid of, let's see, this sword and this scroll to draw three magic cards. One, two, three. And then I have to discard any one magic card. OK, so I got my cards. I'm going to get rid of one of these. Now you can get rid of any one, not just out of the three you drew, right? Exactly, exactly. I'm going to get rid of this. Probably got a bunch of end of game stuff. Yeah. Right here. I have so a I lot of, I have some end of game stuff in here. So I got my magic cards. Of course, the Chaos Beast is going to rush me yep. and fight my dragon oh, again. Oh, yeah, let me roll. Uh, my All dragon right. is the three. Yep. I don't have enough to play that card, but I wish I did. Aww. Uh, yeah, I have no cards to play, so I'm just rolling three. All right. Maybe you roll all sixes. Well, that's not well, one. Do a foot foot down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Six and a three. Oh, no. No. Death no. Dragon is, oh, that doesn't, I don't like that. So you get your XP. It's a sword for I get a thoughts. sword and I get a victory point for my dragon going yeah. to the underworld. Victory point, Ryan, you got me stuck saying XP. Way to go. You know what? I'm thinking combat. What do you earn at the end yeah. of combat? XP. XP. You know what? Really so quick on my turn before you go, I'm mm -hmm. going to play Holy Word. Holy Word is simply, I have to spend a scroll unless I'm up on the yellow track, which I am. And then I can do this for free. I simply move up on the glory track. Oh, wow. So, so move my yellow you get a free resource and I get here. a free resource. It cannot be a gold, unfortunately. But I am going to take a sword of all things. All right. I'm going here, and I'm going to take this tile, and I am done. Nice. I don't want to start a fight, but I am, I am going to do this. Uh, I have a card called Blood Rage, and I'm up on the red oh, track, I so I can play this for get free. get the license for that? <laughs> hey, Blood Rage. <laughs> uh, I, first of all, I gain one uh, vic uh, victory point anyway. And then this, we fight with everybody in the underworld as if it was a combat. Cost two swords. Whoa. Or having beating three up on the track. Oh, Everyone in the yep. underworld? Everyone in the underworld is going to battle. You can spend swords as necessary. You can even send guys from Eldervale into the underworld to help in the fight if you wish. Interesting. There's a reason I'm doing this. The so main we're reason, all in the underworld? Yeah. The main reason I'm doing this is because this is another fight, and I have my warrior in that fight, so I'm going to get another victory point just for being in the fight. Is it for being in the fight or for winning and losing? Each time I'm in a fight, I gain one VP, whether I win or lose. Okay. Very nice. So, uh, does everyone stay in the underworld? Yeah. If we're just fighting in there. Interesting. You can bring in new. In fighting. So starting with Kira, because she has someone there, you can bring your whole crew if you want into the underworld. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna I'll hope guy my guy does there. good. Nice. Are you gonna? Are I don't have no, any guys. No. I don't have any guys I'll out there. All right. So I'm rolling I'll two play. dice. I'm rolling three. I am going to play this though. Aerial Assault. Oh. Um, aerial Assault costs two swords for me. And it says, play during the join phase of battle, yep. which is what we're in. Up to two of your units from your ready area may join the battle. Oh, nice. nice. So I'm going to add you those You get yours guys. right back anyway. 
Well, he gets them right back when they die. That's true. Right. Now they're just stuck there. All, All right, ready? so you actually got, we'll have to regroup. You got three, five four, dice, five. David. I've got five. Well, dice. I might have handed this to you, but I wanted that extra victory point. So three, five, five is my high. whoa six. I definitely didn't beat that. I'm good. Okay. All right, so David wins. David wins. I still okay. got my victory point, but David, you get uh, to move up any one of these elemental power tracks. You know what? Go ahead and move me up the yellow again, please. Yep. Nice. Um, and I have something to announce, everybody. Uh oh. Uh, I've completed. The dragon war quest. To complete this quest, you must win a battle with your dragon. Oh, I see. My dragon was yeah. in the underworld, so I completed that quest for three victory points. One, two, nice. Three. Very nice. Well, well done. And then that was so that was just that wasn't actually an action. That was just a card. You can play spells for free. Uh, so my action is just to go out on the board, and there's nothing out there that gets you two of two different kinds of resources, right? But no. There's, two, I, potions there's here. two potions here. Look, I know better than to go anywhere near that Death Reaver. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I might want Jeremy? to. That's what Jeremy's going to do. He's going to use that Death wanna, Reaver as a bodyguard. Jeremy? I'm going to go to that yellow space and take the dagger slash gem right there. All right. Mm. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring my dragon to the mill so that I can dwell. I'm going to pay two potions to dwell with this feller here. And that's going to get me quite a few points, if Ten I'm not points, mistaken. Ten points, it looks like. Oh. So, two, four, four six, six, eight, ten. ten. Yep. Nice. That Ten was points. big. All, All right. right. Well, my turn is not going to compare that. Um, I'm just going to place here. Uh, take that take nice. free spell card. card. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's, we've been around the table several times. Yes. You guys have a very good understanding of how the game actually structurally plays. Obviously, the further you get into the game, the more combos of cards that will come out that you'll be able to use to your advantage. Uh, we're going to turn off the cameras. We're going to complete the game. Then join us on the couch at the very end to find out who came out on top. Yeah. I think it'll, well, I don't it's know. anyone's hey. game right now. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy's in the last place, but I bet he's probably he's got, got some tricks up his plan. He does. Have a plan. Catch you guys soon. Yep. All right, well, we survived Eldervale, and Eldervale survived us, but I don't think any of us survived this guy over here. He, he and his death monster, yeah, that death monster, reaper, death that reaper thing was ran insane. away with it. Uh, but we all, the three, the rest of us were pretty close. But Jeremy ended up over a hundred points. We were all in like yeah, the we were not 70s, too far behind. 70s, 70s, 80s, and 80s yeah. Um, but yeah, he used that Death Reaper in a way that I don't know that any of us expected, where he was going around the board and just kind of like using it as a bodyguard. So if someone was going to take a spot, he would join the battle. And he was a tough, tough customer. Yeah. Yeah, that Death Reaper can really like bounce around the board a lot. Like that's something you don't think about when you're looking down at this board is the fact that you can move your workers from uh, one battle to the next means, and you use this a couple times, that means you're freeing up that spot you used to be in so that you could place another worker there and take that action again. Well, I think that's a main part of the game, too, is the manipulation of your pawns on yeah. the board. Like, not only where you go, but the combat that you get into, because you're right, you can free up areas and strategically move into those locations to get tiles that you can use in another location. What I found out in this game, now we've played this game combined maybe a, cu a couple dozen, dozen times, times yeah. yeah, and I am finding that the game isn't just about engine building or replacement. The timing aspect of this game is so crucial. When you regroup, where you place your guys, mm -hmm. when you pull back up, how you move your guys around the board, that's almost as important as how big of an engine that you build. Probably in most cases, more important than that. Yeah, yeah for me too, especially because with the wizard and being able to move my wizard on every turn and then with my workers being able to hit from afar, like really spreading out on the board, and then also with the dwellings, um, I think that really helped me capture a lot of the board and at least attempt to keep up with Jeremy this time around. Yeah, you, that wizard, uh, you played it before, and you didn't play it, you didn't use that power I as didn't much get my as you wizard used it today. Out. Yeah, I didn't get my wizard out as early in previous games as I, and, and it was one of those things where I thought about how much I was losing out on not getting the wizard out, so I made sure to get him out early this time. It was really cool the way you just, you, when you read that ability, you don't know that it's as powerful as it is because mm -hmm. at the end of every one of your turns, right, you yep. could simply move, move him another space. So it and no really, battle. Yeah, it made it so that once you place that first worker, you're usually kind of limited to just grow out from there, and there's something could could be across the board that you're not ever getting to. But the wizard can help you get there. The dragon has that ability, too, mm -hmm. to fly mm -hmm. two spaces away when you place him. So, yeah, I agree. I've played this game a ton, and there's still stuff today 
that I'm seeing happen for the first time and strategies that are people are using. Ryan had a magic card. Like we said during the play, oh, yeah. there's tons of crazy magic cards. What was the name of that? That Blood you? Rage card? Blood Rage. Yeah. It brought everyone, it created a battle that was taking place in the underworld. And then anyone in Eldervale could join the fight. Um, and then I actually happened to have a magic card that allowed me to bring ready uh, players from my, or units from my ready area into the yeah. fight. But what ended up happening is that he was able to potentially use that before he took his turn and lure people to come to that fight off of Eldervale, opening up spaces that he could then place in, which was something I hadn't really, I don't know that that's what you were going after. I mean, I just thought it was be, something yeah, interesting. Well, like I said, on when we were filming it, um, I, I really just wanted the XP, everything, or the uh, victory points. Everything <laughs> else that happened was kind of a secondary benefit. But I also, I used my warrior's ability a lot. I used my worker's ability a lot to use roll two dice, and I used my warrior's ability. Did you guys use your abilities? As much, I you know what I didn't. You didn't. Too I much didn't today. use no. Mm -hmm. I mean my my wizard. I never even got out until this is the second time I played this faction, and the second time I haven't used my wizard it's, at all. What was the, what's my, the my wizard? My wizard would allow you to bring him out to the same location where you already occupy, oh, meaning yes. you can double up on tiles. Well, that's not bad. That's not pretty good. Oh, it's, a, it's, you it's, didn't really need it once you got the. I, Death I did. Out. I found out that you know the card play. If you can get a healthy hand of cards. You can make your, you can mitigate your turns to almost fall in your favor when you need to. Yeah. But you have to kind of use your turns in order to do that. Um, I also found in this game, I'm kind of derailing the subject here, but I also found that I went completely different in this game and the fact that I went really heavy with just people at the beginning of mm -hmm, the game. Mm -hmm. Like I made it a point that by the first three or four re regroups, I had all but two people. So I could stay out on the board longer and kind of manipulate the chains longer, which also means that I could use that Death Reaper to be in the right position at the right time. And on the other end, I was watching you kind of suffer from that because you only had two or three people, and once they were in the underworld, you were capped. Like, you couldn't do anything else. Yeah, I had to get my, my other guys out. Um, but that timing, what you're describing there, is something I didn't realize at first, but we, we, you talked about this, I think, David, about sometimes you want to pull your guys up early mm -hmm. and regroup early. You're tempted to just get all your guys out there and regroup because you're going to get tons of triggers on your engine. But when you wait that extra turn, I had it happen where by the time it got back around to me, all of my guys on the board had died. Yeah. yeah. So if I had just regrouped, I could have used them, but since I waited that one extra turn, I had nothing. Yeah, so sorry for derailing. Uh, I did not use my guys the way they probably were made to be used. What mm -hmm. about you guys? I, I definitely use my, the workers, whenever they go to the underworld, I can choose if I want to to have them just come right back to That's me. That's an awesome power. Yeah. It is an awesome power. There are times though where, so that makes me really cavalier about going into battle. And then I find myself when I was regrouping, not really bringing as many people back as I wanted to to activate the cards that I had on, on my tableau. I did have one magic card at one point that was uh, Raise the Dead, I think is oh. what it was called. And it allowed me to, when regrouping, I could play this card and it was a free card to play. It allowed me to use any of the units from the underworld as though they were from Eldervale, so I could activate my tableau. So in that case, I was actually letting my workers stay there, mm -hmm. which I think some of you are like, "Wait, don't you want your workers back?" I'm like, "I'm good." <laughs> um, but then I brought them back and was able to use like two workers and my dragon, which mm -hmm. was su super satisfying because I didn't typically get my workers back that often because they were just recycling and it, cycling. It's always fun to find those combos where you look at a card initially and you think, this isn't really for my faction. And, and then when it hits on your faction, Specifically, it's like yeah. perfect for that, right? What about yours? Uh, uh, yeah, I definitely use my abilities. Normally, I, in this particular faction, I focus really heavily on the workers, but getting that wizard out really allowed, like I said earlier, allowed me to spread out on the board. I got my dwellings out, and I really had spread out across the board, which get, put me in a really good position any time a fight broke out because I had plenty of extra dice to roll. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's something that you don't think about when you look at the elves right away. And you might think you're not using, you're not getting into a lot of combats maybe, and it's because when we're looking at the board, and I know we had a couple instances, you see a spot on the board that looks good, but then you realize it's surrounded by elves. Like, I don't want to go in there because Kira's going to roll six dice every time she fights in some of these areas. Yeah. You know, one thing that's completely off topic that we'd forgotten to mention at the beginning that occurred to us while we were playing after the fact was the all the resources that you have. Obviously, you're going to use all those various resources for a number of different things. But one of the resources is also the cards in your hand, which is kind of a crazy thing. And it's hard to remember, but you can use those resources, particularly on the spaces that ask for any type of two resources, like 
the Mage Tower, mm -hmm. or I think, I forget the name of it, the one that gives you the gold the coins gold in coins, return. Yeah. You could trade in, you know, a gem, a potion, a scroll, but also cards out of your hand. I had one turn, just a comedy of, like, not comedy of errors, but it was like a windfall, rather, where I had cards, I was playing cards that let me draw more cards. I had, like, ten cards at one point, and that same one, I had a quest that let me score points for every spell that I'd cast that round, yeah. which was what the whole turn was about, was yeah. casting three spells mm -hmm. so I could max that out and get six points. Those quests are a lot of fun for me. I yeah. get those quests in my hand, and unfortunately, those are the sorts of things that will derail my game. Mm -hmm. I'll get less focused on what's yeah. going on, and I'll go, oh, I gotta complete this quest. I mean, I did, but it, it wasn't enough to win. Yeah. Well, I think the game is called Dwellings of Eldervale, and you would think, oh, building your dwellings is the way to earn points and win the game. And while that's the obvious way, you're going to get a lot of points from building those dwellings, I didn't build a ton, and a lot of my points came from in-game cards. And you had a lot of points from in-game cards mm -hmm. and just using your workers and stuff. Yeah, so you can you can go one specific route, or like Kira did in, in this game, you can diversify and go up multiple different tracks and use those multipliers with what you have there, with the cards in your tableau that you build and the d the dwellings that you have. So you're you, you don't have to go down one particular path. You don't have to go your straight element. Although it does give you a leg up at the beginning of the game, and obviously to tailor some of those uh, later tiles that you put on those type of cards, but you can go many different mm -hmm. routes. And that's one of the things that's super exciting for me about this game is that I played this one very differently than my other games and mm -hmm. I was still able to do fairly well in the game. And I know just in talking with Luke and breaking games that there's a lot of other things that are obviously going to come out in the Kickstarter yeah. that we haven't even seen yet with the game. Yeah, they yeah. talked during development they talked about like drafting the magic cards at the beginning, which yep. would be a lot of fun for us. Yep. Um, I don't think you'd want to do that with brand new players, but with all the plays we've got, drafting those cards would be fantastic. Sure. Um, and new factions, too, coming with the new Kickstarter. Factions. Yeah, for we sure. We only showed off four. We showed off four. I believe there's eight. One representing each of the magics in the base game, and then one of the stretch goals, I believe, is going to be double-sided boards, so each of the elements has two different factions with even slightly different abilities for two of the units, which right. is crazy. The variability with all the different factions is amazing. Right. And yeah. I think I went really heavy with like, for me, comparatively to other times, I, I kind of went off on a little quest thing the last time we played too. So I really like that, and it, I like getting distracted and 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 going down that way. But I did. I, I had seen in a previous game we played like how powerful getting the dwellings out early in certain locations were. You got a great one today. I, I think I did a, a ten, an eight, yeah. and a twelve. Did you? Yeah. No, a ten and an eight and a six. That's what yeah. it was. Where I'd placed them in places where I got that many points because I made sure to continue on that path, and that was part of having that wizard out. Was really yeah. getting myself around in order to have workers spread out to the best places to dwell. Yeah, yeah. ten point dwelling when you get those mm -hmm. points right when you build. That's a lot of points in this right. game. Well, it's the most you're ever going to get is twelve because that's you got you got to really time that right. Well, I mean, in a game where we were scoring in the eighties and a hundred, yeah. ten points in a single mm -hmm. action is it's great. I've only ever seen one 12 point dwelling and I think you've done and that's that the last great, time And we that's played. the great thing about the game too is that it's it's player driven. Like that tile that I scored 12 points in in that game, the game could have flown in the exact same way with the same tiles coming out. It may have only scored me six point in a, in a different game depending upon mm -hmm. how well mm -hmm. people block the area out, if they got to in it early, mm -hmm. if dwellings weren't built around it. So it's going to change every time that you play it. And the people that you play with are going to be aggressive or not aggressive, which is again going to change the dynamic of the yeah. game. Yeah, so we had a great time as always with this game. This we're, we're all fans of this game. We're really excited for the Kickstarter. If you haven't already, it's probably up there. Go check out the Kickstarter. There's probably a lot more information. Hopefully this round one gave you, like we said, a little bit of a taste for what the game is like. We played a little bit more than one round, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully that just means that you got that much more information about the game. Uh, check back here next time when we have another round one. Until then, we'll see you next time.